Hello and welcome to my very first video podcast. My name is Lindsay and I am a knitter and a maker from the Pacific Northwest of the United States. I live with my husband, our two-year-old daughter, we have two cats and a small flock of backyard chickens and we live in a very cozy <laughs> bungalow that's squished between our neighbors but we still manage to have a little bit of yard for the chickens and some gardening which is kind of my other obsession so um i go by a wooden nest everywhere online um all social media I am probably most active on on um, Instagram and I'm probably the least active on Facebook. I also have a website at www.awoodenest.com but right now that's kind of more of a personal space where I'm collecting recipes and I do plan to get back into um, blogging and things like that and using it for other things but right now blogging hasn't really been something that's been a priority in my life for the last few years, at least for my personal blog, because um, up until last year I was working as a blog editor for a small company in Portland and that kind of took all my creative blogging energy and it, it just fell to the wayside. So um, so did a lot of my other crafts, but um, I left that job last year to become a stay-at-home mom and over the last um, year or and a half or so since I, I quit, I've been picking up more of my own projects and getting back into knitting. So um, I figured this was kind of the perfect time to start this video podcast. I've been thinking about doing it for a long time, but uh, the time wasn't right until now. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be able to talk about knitting because my friends are very crafty and very kind, but anytime you start talking about knitting, with a non-knitter, it's just kind of like, you start to see their eyes glaze over. Because, you know, it's its own thing. And um, I just, I wanted a way to be able to discuss this thing that I do that is an obsession that takes up so much of my life. Um, you know, I wanted to be able to talk about it with people who are as obsessed with it as I am. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the reason that I've decided to do this. And because I really like filming and, I don't know, taking pictures and um, it's just kind of part of my way of uh, being creative and having that creative outlet. So yeah, that's um, who I am and why I'm doing this. And um, I I don't know if I'm going to say that I'm going to do this on a schedule, like every two weeks or once a month or something. I think I'm just going to create videos whenever I have some stuff to share. Um, sometimes... I am able to do more than others. Like over the summer, I typically spend most of my time outside in the garden and, and you know, processing the food and it takes up all my kind of spare creative time. And uh, so the fall is really when it really picks up for me, the knitting. I keep knitting throughout the summer, but. Um, and I really, really, really wanted to make my first episode. Um, I, w I wanted to publish it on the first day of fall which was also Hobbit Day, <laughs> and I consider myself something of a hobbit, so I thought that would have been perfect, but I ended up not feeling well at that time, and I had to postpone it till now, so, so yeah, that's me. It was a little bit difficult for me to decide what projects to show you for uh, my finished objects because I've been knitting for, I don't know, since 2011 or something and, you know, I could show you anything really. But um, I've decided to just kind of stick to what has come off the needles most recently, um, just kind of late summer to up to even yesterday. So um, this is the first thing I will show you. It is a sweater vest um, that I knit for my husband. Um, it's called the Spiral Spun Waistcoat, I believe, by Jaeger Hand Knits, or is it Jaeger Hand Knits? It's a vintage pattern, I believe, and there's not a whole lot of information with it. Uh, it only really gives you information for one size, and um, yeah, I think 
if you're going to knit this pattern, you should probably be quite comfortable with um, making modifications and playing around. I, I first came across the pattern on Karen Templer's Instagram or something, um, and I really just liked the stitch pattern, even though she modified it. It's, her stitch pattern is a little bit different than this one. This is not a perfect project by any means for me. Um, I, I knit this for my husband and I just followed the instructions. I didn't really do a gauge swatch or anything. I, I just wanted to use up this yarn because this was the last sweater quantity stash yarn of like Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. It's uh, the farmhouse Heather colorway. And um, so I just kind of dove in and I didn't really think about it much. I figured I'd start... Um, knitting the pieces, kind of take a look at it and and see what I needed to do. And it was definitely too small. So what I ended up doing was ripping out the seams on the side here and adding a garter stitch panel. I would say it's about two inches wide, maybe three, or maybe even four, but maybe three and a half. Um, just to give it a little bit more width. So it fits in quite well, but um, I don't know, the back is, he has very broad shoulders and a wide back and um, it just kind of pulls along his back a little bit too much, um, which causes the armholes to kind of go straight up into his armpits and it fits him. And he really likes it and he's going to wear it, but he's probably going to have to layer a cardigan or something over it um, for it to really work. Uh, and I was thinking like maybe I should rip it out and redo it, but he, he said he's fine with it. And I think what I'm going to do is just use this as a guide for future sweater vests for him because I think that he definitely needs to have a wide collection of sweater vests because he's just... Um, he just really likes that style. Um, he likes knits and feeling cozy and yeah. So, and also he's planning to learn how to knit himself. He has his own knitting basket. He has all of his own, he has kind of my hand-me-down um, interchangeable needle set. <laughs> Cause I used to use uh, Knit Picks nickel plated uh, needles and I switched recently to Tiago's and I love my Tiago's. So he gets my Knit Picks. <laughs> So maybe he can make his own sweater vest, I don't know. But, um, yeah. I wasn't that excited about it because, you know, if it doesn't fit, it's just not that exciting. And I knew I wasn't going to rip it out. I just, I don't want to go back to this yarn. I've knit so many projects using Wool of the Andes Tweed. It's, it's a really good yarn. It's a sturdy yarn if you are, especially if you are just starting out and you want some affordable wool. Um, it's much better than like any acrylic you can get at the box, uh, craft stores, but, um, I just didn't want to come back to it. I'm kind of done with this project. So I weaved in the ends and sewed on the buttons yesterday and I chose these, uh, pretty wood, if it'll focus, pretty wooden buttons. I think they go quite well. So yeah. He's happy with it. Um, I will try to insert some photos so you can see um, how it looks if I haven't already <laughs> on him. Uh, he pulls it off, but it could be better. So. so my next finish object is a pair of socks. Um, these are my Hermione's Everyday Socks, which is my very first pair of these, which is kind of surprising because this is one of those patterns that like everybody loves, you know, on Ravelry and it's free and it's very easy. I'm going to be making way more of these for sure. And um, the yarn I used is Socks Yeah by Koopnitz in the Axonite colorway, I believe, which is this really beautiful um, dusty pink color. Yeah, I just love that color so much. It's 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 really beautiful. Any dusty, mauvey color. <laughs> I'm a big fan of neutrals and 
textures. So this is pretty much the perfect pair of socks. And it's my first time ever using the Socks Yeah uh, sock yarn, which is a light fingering weight and it creates a, a lighter sock. And when I first came across the yarn in the skein, I was worried that it would be a little bit too flimsy, um, maybe not stretchy enough, but I was wrong. This is a really good sock yarn and I am definitely gonna be using it in more socks, anything with texture. Um, yeah, and it just makes a, a nice lighter sock. So for my third project, I knit a pair of monkeys out of Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock in the Heirloom Tomato Jam colorway. And I, I think this is probably my third or fourth pair of monkeys that I've made. I love this pattern. Um, it's free on Ravelry if you don't know. Um, or I don't know if it's free on Ravelry, but you can definitely get it for free on uh, nitty.com. And it's by Cookie A. And it's just a really great, easy lace um, pattern. And I think it's great for variegated or speckled yarns too. Um, my one complaint, and it's a pretty big complaint, is that, so here's the second sock. And I, and this is the first sock. And the first sock looked like the second sock while I was knitting it. But while I was knitting the second sock, I washed the first sock. And look how much the colors bled. Like it's almost a completely different colorway. And I really am disappointed in how it turned out after I washed it. I, I really just liked the clean look on this one versus the muddied look on this one. So my question is, if you knit with speckled yarns frequently, like is this a normal, typical thing? Like, do they normally bleed this much? Because this was very disappointing. Um, and, you know, it's something that I want to take into account if I'm ever using a speckled yarn for, you know, knitting a shawl or a garment or something. Like, I just, I would want it to look the way it knits up. Because I really liked this, and eh, this isn't really so much my speed. So, yeah. But very cozy yarn, very squishy and warm, and I didn't really like the yarn when I was knitting it, but after it was all knit up, I was like, wow, actually, I really like this. So, I, w I mean, I would knit more socks with Blue Moon Fiber Arts socks that rock, but I don't know that I would go for their speckled yarns again. Or if I did, you know, at least I would know that they're going to do this, so... Yeah. So for my fourth and my final finished object, I knit this um, cardigan for my daughter. It's the Carl's Cardigan by Petite Knits, and I knit the two to three year size, but I added a lot of length to the sleeves and the length of the body because my daughter seems to be growing out of things lengthwise, but she, it's almost like she stayed the same size widthwise. So um, I'm really hoping that the added length will make it so that she can wear this um, next year too. But I think that this is kind of the perfect piece for um, these early autumn months and probably also late spring too. So I just love this pattern so much. And I dyed the yarn myself using matter root and it just created the most perfect autumnal orangey red color. <laughs> I love it. I love the texture of the stitch. This is smocking stitch. I like the right side and I also I also like the wrong side. And the yarn is just smushy. It's great. I think it's going to be very cozy for her. And I can't wait to test it out at the beach. We're going to the beach tomorrow, so I'm going to have her wear this tomorrow for sure. 
I just weaved in the ends and added the buttons yesterday, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to have her uh, wear it. And yeah, I think that's it for finished objects. So I have uh, two and a half-ish projects <laughs> that are in the works right now. And the first one is the Sounds of Life cardigan by Andrea Rangel. Um, it's quite dark, so I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it very well. But this is the body. And I've knit both sleeves already. I just kind of want this to be a, a jacket alternative for me um, on the late fall and winter months when it's really not that cold out because sometimes it gets really cold here but sometimes it stays pretty moderate so I think this is kind of an, a nice alternative to a really thick coat um, especially if it's not raining. So the interesting about thing about this I, I'm using the yarn that Andrea Rangel I think that's how you say her name <laughs> I'm using the suggested yarn, which is this, um, it's a Sistari traditional collection, um, two ply. And yeah, it's a very, very rustic yarn. And I've, I've never knit with anything quite like it. It's, it's almost, uh, papery um, when you first uh, start working with it but then um, after you wash it and block it it becomes more drapey and more soft and um, I just think it's it's really nice I think it's gonna make a really sturdy it's almost rubbery it's got that kind of weird uh, feel to it um, but I think it's perfect for uh, a jacket I think it's going to be so warm. Um, I cannot wait to finish this. But I I have been kind of stuck on it because I, I haven't worked on it in quite a while just because I didn't want to be working on, on this in the middle of summer. I just, it was too hot. Um, but in the pattern she has you doing exposed seams. I don't know if you can see that at all because the yarn's so dark. But the seams are exposed here. Let me turn up the exposure. And I, I don't really like that. So I'm going to rip out the seams and do them so that they're on the wrong side. Um, just on the shoulders, because I, I just don't want the line. But yeah, I don't really have that much left to do on this cardigan before it's done. Um, just got to seam it together, add the pockets, and do a button band, and uh, and then I'm done. So. so this is the Alfred sweater uh, by Petite Knit, and I'm knitting this for my daughter. Um, it's another Petite Knit knit. I'm, I'm kind of on a roll with her patterns because they're just really cute and kind of perfect for uh, kids. And they're very textured, which I, I like. You can't see the texture very well here because the yarn I'm using was originally used for a different pattern and I had to rip it out. And um, so it's quite kinky and uh, it's just kind of muddling up the texture. But once I block it, you'll be able to see it really well. I do have a swatch somewhere that shows the texture a little better. If you can see that. So. Yeah, I think that'll be really nice. It's quite a long knit because it's knit um, using fingering weight yarn. This is the Yoth, Yoth yarn uh, the little brother in the cocoa colorway 
it's so squishy and soft and oh I love this yarn so much um, and if you are someone who loves neutrals and grays like I do um, definitely check out their yarn because their colorways are gorgeous this is the kind of gray that like picks up the lighting in any room and it kind of takes on purpley hues or brown hues just depending on where you are so yeah I, I can't wait to finish this project because I just want my daughter to wear it. So, and then the third uh, work in progress that I'm working on, I haven't really cast on officially, but I'm going to the beach tomorrow and I'm planning on having tons of time to just knit and um, relax and yeah. But this is a swatch that I made um, for the Sweet William pullover. And it just has bunnies, these little bunnies, around the yoke. <clears throat> and um, I am knitting this in Quince & Co. Finch in, I'm not sure what colorways, but um, yeah, these are the, I'll try to include the information on the screen. so pretty. It's a really nice yarn to work with. It's my first time actually ever knitting with Quince and Company and I purchased a lot <laughs> of yarn because I, I heard just such good things and I and I usually use fingering weight and so I just wanted to stock up so I have quite a few projects in mind and I made a swatch using just the neutral color. It's just so pretty. So I'm anticipating several projects in this yarn over the next month or two. <sighs> so it's actually been about an hour since my last segment. My battery died and I only have one battery, so I'm gonna have to get another one. But um, the final thing I wanted to show you is this box. These are all um, of the yarns that I've been um, dyeing botanically. It's kind of funny because up until recently I've been kind of, I've had this kind of weird hesitation toward knitting my daughter garments because I just keep thinking why do I want to spend all that time knitting something for her that she's just going to grow out of um but the thing that helped me get past that is is actually dyeing yarn because you because right now I'm just experimenting with what kind of colors I can get from just the things that I'm growing or kitchen scraps like onion onion skins or um avocado peels and pits um, that like it doesn't I'm not really dying like sweater quantities of yarn for myself or my husband so it really just makes sense to um, knit um, smaller smaller projects um, whether that's garments for Ella or you know little hats or socks or things like that so I was a little bit worried when I got into this um, yarn dyeing thing that it would um, detract from my knitting. Um, I was just like, I don't really need another hobby. <laughs> but um, I don't know, it's just kind of connected things. It's made everything kind of click for me. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to share some of my um, results with you. Uh, you've already seen um, this project, which I dyed using Matter Root. I don't grow the matter at home. I, I purchased the matter root online from Mountain Rose Herbs, but a lot of what I've been using is just kitchen scraps like like tea leaves or coffee grounds or, um, you know, stuff that has tannins. Um, we grow marigolds every summer, so I used marigolds for some dye. 
avocado stones, avocado peel. Um, what else? Un I already said onion skins. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you some of the cool things that I've seen because I, I, I just geek out on this stuff. So one of the first experiments I, I did was with marigolds. And I heard that you can get two different colors from the petals and the stems. So I made two different dye baths and the, let's see, the yellow color was from actually the stems and the green, which I, I hear is a very difficult color to achieve with botanical dyes, uh, was from the actual flower petals themselves. And these colors are both crazy and I probably would not, um, I might do socks, but I don't think that I would knit a garment or a shawl or anything like that with these colors. But what I thought I would do is, um, dip them in indigo, um, which I haven't experimented with indigo at all yet, but when I do, I think it would be cool to see what colors I can get, like a deep green and like different colors of green. So the second plant that I experimented with was avocado stones. I haven't used the peels for anything yet, but the stones I heard, it doesn't take, like you can just use uh, two or three avocado pits and get quite a good concentrated bath. So I used the exact same um, yarn base that I used for the marigolds and I think I only used like eight pits but I, I think I could have even used less to achieve this really, really pretty dusty pink color. And you know, it kind of reminds me of the color from my socks, yeah, socks. So avocado is definitely gonna be a um, something that I collect and dye with a lot because I could see dyeing my pillowcases in this color. My um, duvet is white and I've been thinking about dyeing that. I just think this color is so pretty. So this was red onion skin. If you can believe it. It's a really hard color to, cap to capture on the uh, camera. But it's this light green color with like a, um, if you get it, in the sunlight you can see there is a um, a bit of a red cast to it like a peachy pink I don't know if that's coming through at all but uh, yeah it's really pretty I just don't know if it would suit any of our skin tones I think my husband would probably wear it pretty well but there's only three skeins and um, I think it would be enough yarn for a garment or something for my daughter, but yeah, uh, this is on a Polworth base. So it's been kind of a cool thing for me to be able to experiment with yarn dyes and also different bases of yarn. Um, this is probably my favorite experiment so far. It is a, um, combination of uh, black tea and matter root and I just think it's so so pretty um, I cannot wait to turn this into something but I only have one skein I wish I had done at least two and I think from now on when I dye stuff when I dye skeins I'm gonna do two at a time just because then I have enough to make something uh, this is also a really pretty, uh, experiment. It's all matter, but I did some dip dyeing. So parts of it are more concentrated than others. And, oh my gosh, I love it so, so much. And I already showed you the sweater that I knit for my daughter made out of the wool that I dipped in, that I dyed in matter. And, uh, this is the ball that's left from that or I guess it's a cake <laughs> but the tones in that are much much different than the tones in the skein and that's because this is superwash and this is non superwash 
And I just think it's so interesting how differently um, the same type of fiber will take the dye. Because even where it's most concentrated, it's just a different tone. It's more like a brick color here and, I don't know, lighter here. It's very concentrated. You probably can't see this very well, but this is dyed using Queen Anne's Lace and avocado stones. And um, I'll try to insert a photo so you can see how it looked in the skein before I balled it up. But um, I actually ended up knitting a pair of socks using that yarn just to see how it, w how it would work, uh, work up. And I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I really like the socks. Like it pools pretty evenly. Or I guess I should say it distributes pretty e evenly. Uh, yeah, there's no like concentrated areas of uh, any one color. It's pretty evenly distributed throughout. And uh, it's not my favorite sock base, but it's definitely uh, informative on like how certain, how this technique of dyeing uh, works. And I, I think I'm gonna keep, keep at it because it, it just, yeah, turned out really well. So I originally dyed this skein orange from Cosmos Petals and it was a really pretty orange, but I knew I was never going to use orange for anything, not even socks really. So I decided to um, dye it with uh, coffee grounds and matter root as well, just to see what would happen. And it's very autumnal. It's a little bit ugly. <laughs> but I think I like it enough that I would... I would turn it into a pair of socks. I definitely like it more now than I did when it was just um, plain orange. So, um, yeah. I've been having a lot of fun with dying naturally. Uh, that is it for this episode, I believe. Um, I feel like I've been talking for a really long time. But, um, yeah. I um, I'm going to the beach tomorrow for a week with my family and it's just going to be like a totally low key, uh, thing. So I'm planning on getting a lot of knitting done. I'm hoping to finish Ella's, um, Alfred sweater, Ella's Alfred sweater, <laughs> maybe finish my cardigan and, uh, hopefully I'll have a lot of stuff to show you in the next episode, a lot of progress and it won't be too long before I see you again. So, um, yeah, until then.